in the book of Acts, chapter number 16 and verse number 30. The Bible says this, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Let's pray. Father, it's a blessing to be here today. Thank you for the mercy of God. Thank you for the love of God. Thank you because we can call Jesus our Savior today. We thank you because we have the privilege to preach the Word of God. I pray for liberty. I pray for unction. I pray for power. I pray for the anointing of God. Without it, we're a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. So we pray for your touch and your blessings in Jesus' lovely name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Brother Ed McAbee made a statement not long ago as I was listening to him preach, and he said, he asked a fellow, said, do you know how to get to heaven from Gaffney, South Carolina? I said, huh? said, do you know how to get to heaven from Gaffney, South Carolina? That's where Brother Ed lived. And so let me ask you that question today. Do you know how to get to heaven? A lot of people don't know how to get to heaven, do they? A few years back with some of us men, we were going up to the bus conference in the, in the month of February, and uh, we was on our way to Walkertown. And you know, if you know anything about Winston-Salem, you get up there and uh, you got an old 40, and a new 40. The new 40 kind of goes around Winston-Salem. The old 40 went right through Winston-Salem. So we was talking. It was foggy that night. And I shot right off on the new 40. And, of course, I, when I went down the exit, I said, mm, this, don't, this don't seem right. We went on up the road a little bit and I got off at the exit up there at Kernersville because it was foggy and we was talking. And so I missed it. And so we... Went up there and said uh, to this fellow, he was there in the parking lot. We said, uh, how do you get to Walkertown from here? He said, you can't. <laughs> you can't. And so there's a lot of folks, they just don't know how to get to heaven, do they? Well, I want to talk to you a little bit about how to get to heaven this morning. And, of course, there's some terms that we use sometimes that people don't understand. We conservative folks, we Bible folks, we have certain terms we use. Well, you must be saved. And a lot of folks don't know what you mean when you say saved. And I've had folks say, well, I'm saved already. And they didn't know anything about salvation. Jesus said, you must be born again. A lot of folks don't know what that means. You must be born again. If you go to heaven, you must be born again. We use the word regenerated. Have you been regenerated? Have you been made new in Christ? And, of course, uh, the Bible talks about a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things become new. We use the word converted. You must be converted to go to heaven. Well, you've got to be all those terms, and most of them mean the same thing almost. And uh, so that's some terms sometimes people don't understand. How can you go to heaven? How can you go to heaven? First of all, you've got to come to Christ. The Bible said in the book of John chapter 5 and verse 40, Ye will not come to me that you might have life. You got to come to Christ if you want life. If you want to go to heaven, you got to come to Christ. The Bible says in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, he said, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Boy, there's rest in Christ. There's rest. There's peace of soul in Christ. There's no rest outside of him. The Bible said the wicked are like the troubled sea. They have no rest day or night. Because they've got a troubled conscience. they got sin that haunts them. But when you come to Christ, he said, I'll give you peace. I'll give you rest. And so there's rest in Christ. Come to me, he says. Again, the Bible said in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 1 and 18. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. He said, come now, come now, come now. He didn't say come later. He didn't say come next week. He didn't say come next year. He said, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And so you got to come to Christ. Again, the Bible said in the book of Isaiah chapter 55, Ho, everyone that thirsteth. Uh, if you're thirsty, if you're thirsty, your soul is thirsty today. The Bible said, come ye to the waters. He that hath no money, the Bible said, come and buy and eat. Uh, he bids us to come. Salvation is free, isn't it? Salvation is free. He said, yea, come buy wine and milk without money, without price. She said, wait a minute, preacher. He said, wine. Well, he's talking about joy. You get joy there, right? Uh, milk, boy, that's satisfying. That's soothing. Boy, milk is a wonderful thing. Uh, and so he says, come without money, without price. You don't have to have any money or don't have to have any price to come. It's free. The salvation of God is free. Come, come, come to Jesus. That's what he is saying. You got to come. 
Again, the Bible says, he, in the book of Revelation, he said, and the spirit of the bride say, come. The spirit says, come. The bride, the church of the living God says, come. We as a church tell sinners to come. Don't ever cease telling them old sinners to come. Come to Christ. Come to Christ. He says, they say, come. Let him that is a thirst come. And let him that... Hey, hear us say come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will, whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. Thank God you can come to the water of life and you can have life and life eternal. You say, is that the same thing as going to heaven? Yes, sir, brother, you get that water of life, you're going to heaven. You're on, you got a ticket to heaven. Amen, you sure have. Again, the Bible tells us we must believe you're going to heaven. If you want to know how to go to heaven, you must believe. Believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the Bible said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Glory to God. And you know when you get that everlasting life right now, right now, you don't have to wait to get to heaven to find out if you're going to heaven. Brother, when you believe on him and trust him, I'll promise you right then and there he writes your name in the Lamb's book of life and you've got a ticket to heaven. Again, the Bible said in the book of John chapter 8 and verse 24, if you believe not that I'm he, you shall die in your sins. If you don't believe Jesus is the Son of God, if you don't believe He's the Savior of the world, if you don't believe that He's the one that was sent from God the Father, that He died on the cross, that's a substitution for me and for you. If you don't believe that, you'll die in your sins. The Bible said in the book of Romans, He said, With a heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. With a heart man believes. He believes unto righteousness. He believes on Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus, when He came up to see Martha and Mary after that Lazarus had died. And of course, Martha comes out and said, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And then Jesus said, I am the resurrection of life. Your brother Lazarus is going to live again. She said, oh, I know it. I know it. I know he will to the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Aren't you glad he's that right now? We don't have to wait till we get to heaven. He's that right now. Thank God he is the way, the truth, and the life. She said, Martha, he, she said, I believe thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God that should come in the world. I believe. I believe. I believe. Do you believe that today? I'm glad I say I believe it. If you believe that, raise your hands and wave them. Praise God. I believe it, I believe it, I believe it. Yes, sir. And so if you want to go to heaven, you got to come. Got to come to Christ. Number two, you got to believe. Then number three, the Bible said you got to repent. You got to repent. You said, now wait a minute, preacher. Wait a minute, preacher. Well, repentance and believing is Siamese twins. You can't separate the two. If you really, if you really believe, you'll repent of your sins. If you really repent, you'll believe. You see, people do repent of things and they don't believe. They repent of drinking sometimes. They repent of, uh, you know, of smoking or cussing or something like that. Uh, but that don't mean they've done it from the, for the glory of God or because they love Jesus and all that. Well, let me just give you a few things about this matter of repentance. Repentance means to turn from. It means to go in the opposite direction. It means to turn around. Well, the Bible said old John the Baptist preached repentance, didn't he? He preached repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You know, Jesus preached repentance in the book of Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17 and also Mark 1, 15. He preached repentance. He preached repentance and believed the gospel. Repent, repent, turn from your sins. He said in the book of Luke chapter 13, he's talking about, you know, the tire that fell on those people up there. He said, suppose you that there are sinners above all people. He said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. He said, you think those people that old uh, Pilate offered their blood upon the altars of sacrifice, you suppose they were sinners above all people? He said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. So Jesus preached repentance. Well, if John the Baptist preached repentance and Jesus preached repentance, well, that ought to say, hey, hey, that's, that's good stuff, isn't it? The disciples preached repentance in the book of Mark chapter 6 and verse 12. He sent them out and said, preach repentance. Preach repentance. Tell people to repent. You know the rich man in hell preached repentance? The rich man in hell. He is in hell. If anybody knew anything about what's going on, he probably did, right? Because in the hell he lifted his eyes. And he said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus back that he may warn my five brothers not to come to this awful place of torment. He said, they got Moses and the prophets, let them hear me. He said, nay, Father. He said, send one back. If one went back from the dead, they'd repent. 
If one went back from the dead, they'd repent. Jesus came back from the dead and they hadn't repented. Hey, hey, there's a lot of folks, they just won't believe, will it? And so the old rich man in hell, he believed in repentance. And he was preaching repentance there, wasn't he? Peter preached repentance in the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And uh, so that's what Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost. Repent uh, and be baptized for the remission of sin. Paul preached repentance. This is what Paul said in Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now, but now, in the dispensation of grace, this side of the cross, this side of Calvary, Paul said, now God commandeth all men, God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. God commands every man to repent. He commands you to repent. He commands me to repent. He commands everybody to repent. If you're going to heaven, you're going to have to repent of your sins. Y'all get that? You have to turn from your sins. You have to turn around and go in the opposite direction. And so, hey, the Bible said again in the book of Acts chapter 26, if you doubt uh, Paul was preaching repentance, he said uh, that God called him and he said he went to show in them of Damascus and them of Jerusalem and them of the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles, this is Paul in his ministry, that they should repent and turn to God and do the work of repentance. Paul said he preached to all these people and to the Gentiles. So Paul preached the gospel to the Gentiles. He was the one that uh, wrote 14 books of the New Testament. And so he's the one we base our doctrines upon, what he is right in say. And so Paul said he preached repentance to the Gentiles. So most of y'all are Gentiles, right? And so, hey, he tells us to repent. So you have to repent. If you're going to heaven, you got to repent. You can't live in sin. You can't walk in sin. And you say, well, preacher, I, I come short. Well, all of us do. But if we come short, you know what? The Bible said little children sin not. But if you do sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. You run to him, confess your sins. If we confess our sins, he's faithful. He's just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Ain't that wonderful? Yes, sir. Uh, have you ever used that verse? Yes, sir. If you're saved, I believe you used that verse. And sometime that old devil said, well, Lord won't forgive you. But the Bible said he will. And that's what I like. Okay, number four, you got to confess Christ. The Bible said, well, the heart man believes in the righteous with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation. He said, if you believe on him, you're not ashamed. What, what you got to be ashamed of if he saves you, if he forgives you, if he washes you from your sins, if he takes away your sins, if he forgives all the more nasty, wicked, ungodly sins, he washes you and makes you clean. What have you got to be ashamed of? You're not ashamed of your mom and daddy, are you? Well, some people may be because of the life they live, but normally speaking, that's not true, is it? You're, you're proud of your mom and daddy. You're proud of the way they raised you, for they raised you for Jesus. And so there must be that confession of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my Savior. Well, number five, right quick, you must be baptized. Well, I know you can go to heaven without being baptized. And, of course, the Church of Christ folks, they believe you. You're not saved until you're baptized, you know. Well, if I believe that, I just baptize every old sinner coming and going. I just make sure God, I got him washed real good. I dip him and maybe dip him two or three times. <laughs> it's like that little joke the uh, Lord tells sometime. An old drunk come by and, <laughs> and said the preacher got him and baptized and brought him up and said, you see Jesus? He's, <laughs> he said, no. He put him down second time. <laughs> and he said, no, I didn't see him. He put him down the third time and brought him back up and said, did you see Jesus? <laughs> he said, he must not have got drowned here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't do no good. You can baptize them till they know their Social Security number down there. But hey, hey, hey. You know what baptism means? Because a lot of people don't know what it means. They think it does wash your sins away. It says to the world, you believe that Jesus died and was buried and the third day rose again. That's what baptism signifies. It's a symbol of the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Son of God. That's what you say when you surrender to baptism. And when you say, I want to be baptized, you're saying, I believe that Jesus died for me and he was buried and the third day he got up from the dead. Thanks be unto God. I'm glad I know the way to heaven. What about you? Let me give you one more thing here. The Bible said we must, well, two things, I guess. We must follow Christ. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. 
You got to follow Jesus. Just follow him. Follow me. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. I don't know. I don't know how to get to heaven, but follow him. Follow him. And so we need to follow him in, the, in living right and testifying and, and winning souls to Jesus. Yes, sir. Number seven right quick. The Bible said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Can we shout a little bit on that? Hallelujah, how true that is. Okay, uh, that's a little bit how to get to heaven. What happens when you get saved anyway? What happens when you get saved? How do I know when I get saved? What will happen to me? Well, that's what I want to tell you. What will happen to you when you get saved? Number one, your heart will be changed. Your heart will be changed. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, right? Your heart will be changed. Your life will be changed. Your thinking will be changed. Your talking will be changed. Your desires will be changed. Your desires will change when you, you won't want to go out there in the world and drink and cuss and run around. You want to go to God's house, right? You want to go where the saints of God gather together. You'll, you'll experience a change of desires. Because if that don't happen, friend, there's something wrong. I mean, if, I mean, if there's no change of heart, no change of desires, there's something bad wrong. The old fellow said, you missed it, you missed it. Number two, a light will turn on your soul. The Bible said in the book of John, chapter 8 and verse 12, I am the light of the world. He that follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. A light will turn on you over in your soul. When I got saved, I was only 13 years old. And I began to see things, understand things that I never understood. I mean, here I am, a 13-year-old boy. What does a 13-year-old boy know? He don't know much. But God began to talk to me. I'd be out there in the field riding that old track. And the Holy Ghost, he began to talk to me. He'd begin to show me things. Hey, he turns a light on your soul. Amen. Your soul might have been dark before, but now there's light in your soul. Your soul is light because you've trusted Christ. You know what will happen when you get saved? You'll have a love for the Word of God. Oh, I couldn't hardly wait to read the Bible. I love that Word of God. And I'd be so excited every day I'd learn something new and I'd want to tell my friends, my buddies, I'd want to tell them something new I learned from the Word of God. Because you just love that Bible. That's the bread of life. It's honey out of the rock. Oh, praise God, it's water to a thirsty soul. And so, hey, it'll put a love in your heart for the Word of God. Hey, after all these years of being saved, I can still tell you, I love the Word of God. I still love it. It's still a blessing to my soul. Hey, of all the books, a fellow was dying. He told his servant, he said, go get the book. He said, what book is that? He said, the only one. Get the Bible. That's the real book. That, that book will let you know what's right and what's wrong. And I'll tell you something else. When you get saved, you'll love the church. These people want to cuss the church all the time, and they put the church down. The Bible said Jesus loved the church and died for the church. If Jesus loved the church and you receive the love of God, you're going to love the church. Oh, there's, you know, the church has got wrinkles and blackheads and things like that, right? But he's going to straighten them all out when we get to heaven. All the wrinkles and all the things of the church, he's going to work it all out. I know we're not perfect. We're not a perfect church. Hey, I'm a, somebody said, I'm going to find a perfect church. Well, God bless you. You're going to have to wait until you get to heaven to get it. Because there ain't no perfect church down here. And if you find one, don't join it because you'll make it imperfect then. And so you'll love the church, right? Yes, sir, it'll put the love of Christ in your heart. It'll make you a new creature. Hey, when you become a new creature, you get new friends, right? You get new friends. You say, I get saved. I lose all my friends. Yeah, you'll get a whole bunch of new ones and good ones too. Amen. You'll get a love for that new book, the Bible. A new language, no more cussing, no more dirty jokes. It's a new life. The old man has passed away in the, because you, the old man has died. And he's done away with in Christ. You've got a new man. A new man. And you're going in a new direction. Instead of going down, 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 down in darkness, you're going up, up, up in light. Oh, praise God. You know what? You've got a friend. You've got Jesus as your friend. Let me give you a few thoughts about Jesus. I'm talking about when you get saved. 
what happens to you? Jesus becomes your redeemer, right? How you say, well, he's everybody's redeemer, but they can't claim he's the redeemer because they haven't been saved. He's our redeemer. He's our Lord. He's our master. A master who tells you what to do. Aren't you glad Jesus tells you what to do? When you seek his will, he never tells you wrong because he's your guide. When you get saved, you got a new guide. You got Jesus as your guide and the Holy Ghost as your guide. She's singing, my shepherd there, while I go, he's your shepherd. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> he's my shepherd. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Aren't you glad you got a shepherd today? You know that shepherd, he watches them sheep. Everything about them sheep. He sees everything about them. He knows if they got any kind of disease. He knows if they're sick. He knows if they're puny. He knows if they're losing weight. He knows everything about them. He knows, thank God. He guides, don't he? He takes care of his sheep. He's your friend. The Bible said Jesus is your friend. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I had some brothers pretty close to me. I told you, Demer, he, two times he got tangled up with this woman. She was trying to jump on me, and he took my part. He could have whipped her with one fist, but he just tried to hold her off. She was a fighting and the pulling and a scratching like crazy. Now I'm standing there. Here I am. Uh, he's a taking my part. That's what Jesus does. <laughs> he's a taking our part, isn't he? He sure is. Yes, sir. He sticks closer than a brother. He's your intercessor. Little children sin not, but if you do, you have an advocate with the Father. He's an intercessor. Jesus Christ, the righteous, he pleads our cause. He goes to God and said, oh, Father, that's my child. That's my child. They've trusted me. They believed upon me. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. He's our high priest. Amen. He's the great high priest that's passed in the heavens who has paid the sacrifice for our sins. He's paid it all. But something else, you know what? When you get saved, old Slewfoot, he's always been your enemy. But he's going to be your Worst enemy then. <laughs> that devil, boy, he is going to get mad when you get saved. He's going to start working on you, and he'll say, well, you didn't get saved. You just thought you did. <laughs> and he'll throw them temptations in front of you. But you know what? The Lord is there to strengthen you. The Lord is my helper. In the battles of life, he's my helper. In the trouble, he's my When the storms are raging, he's my helper. He'll be there, thanks be unto God. Yes, sir, the old devil. Yeah, the world, the flesh, and the devil's our enemies, right? Yes, sir. Okay, I've been talking about how do you get to heaven? What happens when you get saved? When you uh, get on that road to heaven, amen. Then I want to say number three, what you must not do if you want to go to heaven. What you must not do if you want to go to heaven. Number one, you must not procrastinate. Do not procrastinate. Don't say tomorrow. Don't say some other time. God the Holy Ghost says today, 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 today's the day of salvation tomorrow. It may be too late. You know, I was reading a little illustration in one of the books there. Talking about this young man, he got sick. The doctor was called. And the doctor told him, said, son, it's not going to be long. You're going to be checking out. Oh, he said, doc, I've missed it. I've missed it. Said, I've put us off salvation. It's too late. And the doctor said, no. Uh, you, you know, the old thief, he got in on the 11th hour and, and you you know, on his deathbed, so to speak, he's hung on the cross, said, you can get saved now. He said, no, doc. I said no to the Holy Spirit. I said no. When the Holy Spirit was dealing with him, the Holy Spirit was knocking on my heart, said, I said no. Oh, he said some people got in on the 11th hour. He said, doc, I missed it. I missed it. I said no to the Holy Spirit. I wanted to live in sin a while longer. I meant to make peace with God. I meant, I meant a little later to make sure of my salvation. But he said, I said no. And said, now I missed it. I missed it. And he died saying, I've missed it. I've missed it. Oh, wouldn't that be sad? Do not procrastinate. Number two, don't make excuses if you want to go to heaven. You know, that old sinner man, he's got all kinds of excuses. I'm old. I'm young. I'm all this. I'm poor, I don't know this, and I don't know that. And, oh, yes, people's got excuses on top, excuses on top, excuses. But don't make excuses. Come to Christ. There's no reason why you shouldn't come to Christ today, today, today. Come to Christ today. Don't make any excuses. Number three, don't persist in sin. If you want to go to heaven, you can't persist in sin. You can't just walk over the Holy Spirit. You just can't walk over the uh, rebukes of the Holy Spirit and expect God to bless you and God to take you to heaven that way. No, sir. You can't persist in sin. 
Number four, don't lie to yourself. A lot of people lie to themselves. They lie and say, I've got plenty of time. They lie and say, uh, you know, I'm just as good as old so-and-so, and I've heard them say that. Well, if he's saved, I'm saved. And if he's saved, the woods are full of them. And they, you know, they lie to themselves about different things. They lie to themselves that they're saved and when they're not saved and all that. Hey, don't lie to yourself. Be honest with yourself. Look at your heart and be honest with yourself. Because if you don't, friend, you can miss heaven. Number five, do not substitute church membership for salvation. There's people that substitute church membership for salvation. Hey, it don't work. You could join every church in North Carolina and still die and go to hell. Don't substitute baptism for salvation. As I said a moment ago, you can be baptized, never pool, never, never tadpole, knew your social security number, and your telephone number, and everything else, and still die lost and go to hell. Don't substitute salvation for good works. Good works won't take you to heaven. The Bible said we are saved unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. But don't substitute. A lot of people say, well, I do good. I do this. I, I, I'm good to the poor. I, I give and all this. And they, they substitute good works for salvation. That won't do when you stand before the God of heaven. Number six, do not fear what others will say about you. A lot of people are ashamed, you know. They'll say, what old so-and-so? What do my buddies say? What do my uh, people that I work with down on the job? What do they say? What do my family say? Don't be sure what anybody says. It's your soul. Right. It's your eternity. you got to take the lead on your own soul, don't you? you got to say, it's my soul. It's my destination. I've got to take care of that. Sometimes the family don't want you to serve God. In the case, a lot of religious cases, that's true. You get saved, they just bury you. Hey, it's your soul. It's your soul. We had this Catholic lady got saved up in, up in Zion Hill. And they said her mama just had a fit because she was a dedicated, devoted Catholic and said she'd go to, the, go to the church every day and pray for her. She said, Mama, you didn't used to pray for me. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. <laughs> you know, don't worry about what others will say about you. Just worry about what Jesus knows about you, amen. Because right, right. when it's all said and done, it won't make no difference what people say about you. When you stand before the God of heaven, he won't ask you what people said about you. He wants to know what you've done with him. Right. Number seven, do not let past hurts or disappointments keep you from coming to Christ. I know people right here in this county, that's happened to. It's happened to. They told me out of their own mouth, used to go by and visit this, this gentleman and his grandkids come to church. I rode the church bus. And every once in a while I'd stop by and I'd say, what about coming to church? I'll come and get you. He said, preacher, I've got a, a way to church. But he told me he was hurt when he was a little old boy. The preacher blamed him for something he wasn't guilty of and he never went back to church. Don't let past hurts don't let past hurts keep you from coming to Christ. This man told me, he said, I was in this service and said I had to go to the restroom. He said, I got up and started out and said to the preacher, look at there, he can't take his straight preaching. He said it had nothing to do with his preaching. But he went back not to church anymore. You see, sometimes that devil, he'll give you those excuses because you've been hurt or somebody said something bad to you. Don't let that keep you from coming to Christ. We all get hurt at times, don't we? But when you cut your finger, I cut my hand. If you look close, you can see a scar right there when I fell. But it's healed, thank God. I mean, we get cut, we get bruised up, and we heal. That's the way it ought to be emotionally and spiritually. And so listen, don't let these things keep you from coming to Christ. Carol made a statement this morning, coming to church. She's talking about, you know, the appointment. We got an appointment one day with God. She said that's the most important appointment that we'll ever have, and that's true, isn't it? The appointment that you have with God is the most important appointment that you have. Well, you know what? When you got an appointment with a doctor, you know what they do? They, Carolyn's doctor called, they called two weeks ahead of time. Well, I could forget in two weeks, couldn't you? <laughs> 
But most of them call a day or two ahead of time remind you that you've got an appointment. Do you know what the Holy Ghost does to sinners? He reminds them time and time and time again. You've got an appointment with God. You better get ready for that appointment. I mean, that's the most important appointment you'll ever have that you'll ever keep, and you're going to keep it. You say, I ain't going to keep it. Yes, you are. There ain't no way out of it. It's appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. It's appointed for you to die and to face God Almighty. Do you know the way to heaven? Do you know how to get to heaven? Do you know how to get to heaven from right where you sit? Do you know how to get to heaven from Gastonia? If you don't know, you need to come this morning and, and let the Lord save you. Let him, let him show you and let him give you the power to say yes to Jesus Christ. You say, preacher, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. He said he came to his own, and his own received him not. He came to his own people, the Jew, and they received him not. But to as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And so if you'll come to him, he'll set you free. If he had bowed, every eye closed, could I ask you this morning, how many people here know the way to heaven and say, preacher, I'm on that way. I know I'm saved. I know I'm right with God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wonder if there's a person here, you say, preacher, I couldn't raise my hand right there, but I can sure raise it right here. I need prayer today. Preacher, pray for me. Stick it up and hold it long enough for me to see it, and you can take it right. Beloved, do you know how to go to heaven? I asked you the second question, are you ready to go to heaven? If the Lord should call you tonight, are you ready to meet the Lord? Have you made preparation? Have you repented of your sins? If you're going to heaven, beloved, you must come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, come unto me, and I'll give you rest. He said, you will not come to me that you might have life. So the only way that you can have life eternal is to come to Jesus Christ. He said, I am the door. I am the way. And so he's the only way to heaven. He's the only door. And so, beloved, you've got to come to Christ. You have to believe upon him. Believe upon Jesus Christ that he's the Son of God. The Father sent him into this world to be the propitiation for our sins, to be the substitute to die on a cross because the blood of bulls and goats is never sufficient to take away your sins. It is the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, that cleanses from all sin. And, of course, you must repent of your sins. You must turn from your sins and give up your sin, renounce your sins. You say, Preacher, I can't be perfect. None of us are perfect, but I'm glad we have an advocate. When we sin, we can run to the Lord Jesus, and he'll forgive us, and he'll give us power to overcome the things in our life that are sinful and wicked. Beloved, what about it? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ tonight? Are you ready to go to heaven? Do you know the way? If you don't, you need to find out and make peace with God. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow you could be in eternity. Do not procrastinate. Do not put it off. Do not make excuses. Don't let past hurts and past disappointments keep you from coming to Christ. Come to Christ tonight. Don't let anything keep you from coming to Jesus Christ. Whatever it may be the devil is using against you to keep you from coming to Christ. I mean, just push it aside and come on to Christ tonight. And... Ask him to forgive you and ask him to save you. Let me lead you in the sinner's prayer. And you pray this from your heart. You mean it and believe upon Christ. You say, Lord Jesus, I'm a guilty sinner. I know that I'm lost. I know I'm undone, but I'm coming to you. I know that you're the Savior of the world. I know that you died for me. I know that you were buried in the third day you rose again. I know that you got the power to forgive sins. I know that you have the power to forgive me. And I'm asking you to forgive my sins and to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I surrender my will. I surrender my life. It's yours from this night forward. In Jesus' name. Beloved, I hope you prayed that prayer. I hope you meant it from the depths of your heart. I hope you pick up that phone and call us and let us know what the Lord's done for you. The first number's at church. There's nobody there tonight. Second number's Brother Eddie. He'll be waiting on your call, so call him. And he'll pray with you and uh, give you instruction of whatever you need. And then, of course, the address will be on the screen. We'd be thrilled to hear from you. So write us and let us know if you'd like to have a part in this ministry. We'd appreciate that. And I want to thank every one of you that helped us financially. It uh, is a blessing. 
It's a blessing, a great blessing, and the Lord repays a hundredfold, 10,000%. There's no dividends in the world like the Lord pays. And so thank you again and again for your support of the Bible Hour. We love you. I trust the Lord will continue to bless you, keep his hand upon you. Join us again this same time next week. I'm going to let the Primitive Quartet take us off the air. May God bless you. And by the way, don't forget uh, this coming Saturday is the Fall Festival right here at the Zion Baptist Church uh, from 10 to 2 right here in South Gastonia, the Zion Baptist Church, our Fall Festival. Bring your kids, bring your young people and come. Then, of course, on November the 4th, the first Sunday in November, we have having Bring a Friend Day, so we hope you'll get to come and be, be a friend to us and for us to be a friend to you. Thank you again for being there. Here's the Primitive Quartet. On a cross One Friday morning The sins of this soul world He took on himself They mocked and they cursed him And spat on our Savior He cried, Father, forgive then he paid the debt. He paid my debt. What love and such mercy gave his life that I could live. He paid my debt. And now there is peace beyond understanding. What a friend so dear, I'll have no fear, he paid my debt. I'm glad he did, aren't you? See if you remember this. On my knees, one glad morning, <laughs> his spirit came to me. And then I did plead In sorrow I cried out God please forgive me I'm redeemed now forever Yes he paid my debt He paid my debt What love and such mercy Gave his life that I could live. He paid my debt. And now there is peace beyond understanding. What a friend so dear, I'll have no fear. He paid my debt. Oh, I remember that very well. On my knees. One glad morning, his spirit came to me, and then I did plead. In sorrow I cried out, God please forgive me, I'm redeemed now forever. Yes, he paid my debt, and he paid my debt. What love and such mercy, listen, gave his life that I could live. He paid my debt, and now there is peace beyond understanding.